Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'm going to show you how to use SignalR to synchronize data in real time across all of your users. Now, we kind of did that in the last episode, but this time we're going to handle all changes to all data. When one user adds, updates, or deletes a record in any table, we're going to let all the other users know so they can take an appropriate action. In my demo, I'm going to refresh the local cache if the action is add or update, and delete a record from my local cache if the action is delete. And that's all happening right now, right here on Blaze and Train! All right, so the first thing I did was I took the complete data project from episode 16, which was done with .NET Core 3.1, and I updated it to use .NET 5. So that's where I'm starting right now. And if you recall, in that episode, I gave you uh, the script to create a Northwind database, right? This is the, the famous Northwind database. It's been around forever. And we also added models from that database, such as alphabetical list of products, or the one that we're going to use, customers. And we created a data context for that. And on the uh, server side, we created a repository EF class, which is generic, which uses a data context and all that. And then we called that with a service on the client called Customer Manager. And so this uses an API repository that we also created, which is a generic repository for making any API call. So go back and watch that show if you want to know exactly how we're doing it. And so what we ended up with is a demo that shows the customers in the Northwind database and allows you to edit the name, the contact name, and also to add a customer and delete it. If you try to, here, let me blow this up a little bit. If you try to delete a customer that has, you know, foreign key records, it's going to tell you, no, I couldn't delete that customer. But you could search by name. So I'll start with all the ones that start with uh, C-A-R. And I'm going to add myself, Carl Franklin, to the database. Now I could update this, Carl Blazer, right? I can make an update to any of these, and they will update. But the only one that I can delete is the one that I just added because there's no foreign keys or anything like that. So I can show all, I can add a customer, I can modify any of these, and they will update. So the goal of today's project, as I said in the studio, is to have two clients side by side. And when any changes in the database happen, we're going to use SignalR to notify all the other clients, hey, uh, somebody added, somebody deleted, somebody updated, and you know you can take appropriate action. All right? So we're going to start with the client by adding SignalR as a package. And that's right here. Microsoft ASP.NET Core SignalR Client. Now, client is the only one we need in the completed data client WebAssembly application because on the server side, SignalR is already there. It's just part of .NET 5. But if we want to use the client, in other words, we want to access the hub, uh, that's what we need. And this is where we're going to do it. We're going to do it in the client app. So next, on the server, I'm going to add a folder called hubs, and to it, I'm going to add a class called data hub. So this hub has one method, sync record. You pass it the table. In this case, it's going to be customers. You pass it the action, which will either be add, update, or delete. And then the ID, which is the customer ID or the whatever ID. Um, and that's as a string because the primary key customer ID is a string. In fact, all the primary keys in this database, as far as I know, are strings. So then what we're going to do is send everybody else who's using this application a message called receive sync record and we're passing these three things so now what we have to do is 
access the hub, be able to send a sync record message and be able to receive a sync record message and do something with it. So that's what we're going to do. So we need a few pieces of plumbing in the startup uh, CS file of the server. First thing we need is a using statement for server hubs, because that's where our hub is. We have to add signal R. Now remember, this is the server, so this is the signal R hosting service. This is to be able to create a hub on the server side, we need to add signal R, but we don't need to add any NuGet packages or anything because it's in the server, as I said. So now under use endpoints in configure, we're going to map the hub data hub uh, to the path or the route slash data hub. Uh, back in the client, we have to add signal R to imports. We have to add that namespace there. And now let's modify the index with all the new code. Now I've updated this to be just a little nicer UI wise in terms of the way it looks and feels and works. It's a little less clunky than complete data was. So let me just show you without demoing the sync stuff, just what the UI looks like single user. Okay. So now rather than having a search button, we're just doing a live filter. So if I want to filter the customers where the contact name includes a C, I just type C and then I can keep typing C A C A R. Okay. So now if I add a customer, the customer Carl Franklin goes in the list because I'm filtering by C A R. Now I can edit myself just like before and update and it just shows up in that list. And if I delete it, it goes away. Of course, I can clear the filter and the existing update stuff and delete stuff works the same way. Could not delete customer. Okay. So let me put Maria Anders back. And now let's pull up another browser and navigate to the same page. Okay. So check this out. Click on Maria Anders, type Maria Anderson. Now watch right over here. Boom, it happened. And what if I filter on car again? And I'm only doing this because it's easier to see that I've added the customer. If I add myself, boom, it shows up over here. And if I delete it, it deletes over here. So how about that? Synchronized database access. Now, I'm not saying this is a good idea in all applications, especially, you know, this kind of stark, oh, my data is just, le you know, moving. But think about this. You could add um, an ID uh, for the user that is working on this data. And you could say, you know, Carl Franklin is editing this data right now. And usually, you know, it's not a complete list of uh, records from a table. Usually it's a subset, right? You might take a customer and you might be working with their orders, let's say, and you might be editing a particular order. Well, if somebody else is also editing that order, you probably want to know. And, you know, you've used these shared documents, right? Like, uh, Google Documents and Office 365 where other, you know, people are collaborating and as other people are modifying things, you see their name, you see who's doing it. So it's very clear that you're collaborating on stuff. But just to show you that it can be done, this is my demo. So now let's take a look at what I've changed, starting with the filter. So we're not searching anymore, we're filtering. And here's the magic for this. It's an array called filtered customers. Now we have our list of customers, but filtered customers, which is customers where the contact name contains the name filter. And I have to convert them to lowercase because I don't want case to be an issue. All right, so that's our name filter. So all we have to do is bind an input box to the name filter 
and this will take care of itself. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm binding name filter and setting the bind event to on input so that we change it on every keystroke. And I also want to clear any error messages or, or set the clear the selected customer whenever I modify this. So I'm handling on key up. And so let's go down to uh, filter changed, which handles keyboard event args. And I'm clearing the error message, which you know shows you can't delete a customer or whatever. Setting the customer, which is the selected customer, to null and updating. So the clear filter button, all it does is it sets the error message to nothing or an empty string. The name filter sets to an empty string, sets the customer to nothing, and then invokes state is changed. All right. So you clear the filter. It shows all the customers, and there's nothing selected. All right, so now let's get down to the nitty gritty of how we're doing the sync. Go down to initialized async. And this is what we had before, get all customers. But now we're creating a connection, a hub connection. That hub connection is defined up the top right here. And it's a signal R connection. Now I've also injected HTTP client because I want to get the base address right here. So you have to give it a URL to the hub, right? And I'm using HTTP client base address, which ends in a forward slash and then data hub. And now I'm saying any time that I receive this message from the hub, receive sync record, I want to call this on receive sync, which accepts three strings. On receive sync accepts table action and ID. All right, if we get one of these messages, now it's up to you to figure out what to do. In this demo, I just look to see if we're looking at customers, you know, if the change was in the customers table, and the action is not delete. In other words, it's add or update. I'm just going to refresh the customer list. Now, if the table's customers and the action is delete, I am going to use that ID to find the customer in my list and remove them. That's all I'm doing. All right. So if there's an add or an update, we just get all customers. The filter takes care of everything else. Okay. Now, when things happen, like, uh, for example, add customer, right? Right here, here's the magic. We're just invoking sync record on the connection. All right. Here's the hub sync record. This is what we're invoking. And we're passing customers as the table, add as the action, and the customer ID. That's it. And so for update customer, same thing, except the action is update, passing customer ID. And you guessed it, delete customer. Delete is the action, passing customer ID. And folks, that is all there is to it. It's pretty simple, but this idea of being able to synchronize CRUD operations is uh, pretty powerful and it can really help avoid data collisions and things like that when you've got two or more people working on the same set of data. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. Thanks, Carl. So now that you have the basic idea, you can use SignalR to synchronize data however you see fit. You can thank me later. Oh, and hey, please apologize to your life partner for me introducing you to this time vampire. It cost me a bouquet of flowers. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Place a